This is gonna be the ultimate shifted pre-workout review. So we have the maximum formula, but we also have the premium formula. So you might be wondering what the difference is between the shifted maximum and the shifted premium formula. And I'm gonna run you through the ingredients. Again, just like I always do with supplement reviews, the ingredients list, that's the most important part of any supplement. If it doesn't have the right ingredients, doesn't make sense to take it. Taste, mixability, and the price. And those would be the categories we grade this shifted pre-workout on. But to start, we're gonna start with the differences between the two supplements and then dive into the ingredients. And I've got them written down here just for ease of use. So the premium pre-workout has two grams less of alcitrulline, it has three grams less creatine, two grams less taurine, 500 milligrams less beta alanine, and 50 milligrams less caffeine. So essentially a slightly smaller dose of some of the main ingredients. Luckily, the alcitrulline is still an efficacious dose. The creatine, you're starting to get more on the lower end. Taurine, eh, it's not too bad, just bring it down anyway because it's more synergistic with caffeine. Beta alanine, a little lower, and then a little less caffeine, especially for those who are more caffeine sensitive. So let me start this with the maximum formula pre-workout because the ingredients are the same, just slightly less than this uh, premium formula, which I'll run through in a bit. But this is probably the highest dose pre-workout and most efficacious dose pre-workout that I've found on the market because they literally put in the maximum dose of every ingredient you could think of in a pre-workout. Just to show you, most pre-workouts give you a small scoop, maybe 10 grams. This is a 30 gram protein scoop. Yeah. So literally you're taking a protein scoop a worth of powder for your pre-workout because there's so many ingredients in this and that's the benefit of it. So let's run through the main ingredients. I'm not gonna list them all at once. I'm gonna go through them one by one, by one just because there's so many of them. So firstly, we have L-citrulline. We have eight grams, and I'm yet to come across a pre-workout supplement that is dosed eight grams, which is the upper limit typically we see within the research to see efficacious or performance improvements. Typically, we're looking anywhere from six to eight grams per dose to see acute performance enhancement. So L-citrulline is one of those supplements that give you acute performance benefits versus having to take it over time to see those performance benefits. For example, we typically see endurance benefits from these doses, being able to perform more reps in a set, being able to last longer during time to exhaustion tests, etc. And the way it works is it's a nitric oxide booster. Now, if you remember the old days with no, uh, NO explode, etc., they would use L-arginine to try boost nitric oxide. The problem with L-arginine is it's broken down in the gut. And once it's in the gut, it gets destroyed very quickly. And none of that L-arginine gets uh, converted into nitric oxide, so you don't get much of an effect. L-citrulline is a precursor to L-arginine. So what it does is get broken down in the kidneys. The ki in the kidneys, it turns to L-arginine. Now it's not in the gut. Now most of that L-arginine can become nitric oxide to improve blood flow and improve some of these endurance markers. Hence why supplements now all use L-citrulline, they don't use L-arginine. So you have a full dose within the maximum formula. You then have creatine monohydrate, five grams. Again, that is the maximum dose that you're typically taking per day. Now, I'm typically not a fan of having creatine within a pre-workout. And the reason is you need to take creatine every damn day for it to have a positive effect on your performance. Because it's in a pre-workout, you're likely not taking pre-workout every day. So you're gonna to need to supplement with creatine outside of your pre-workout anyway. Creatine is relatively cheap, so you can just use a cheap creatine supplement to do that. However, like on days you're not taking your, or on the days you're taking your pre-workout, you can just not take the creatine. So this is just a good example because you five grams, so you don't need to top up or anything like that. So you get a full dose. You're typically looking at increases in strength, being able to perform more reps in a given set and even enhance power output through hard power endurance tests. Just a quick rundown on how creatine works. You're typically saturating the muscle with phosphocreatine. Creatine binds to phosphate molecules. You use ATP as energy for your muscles. ATP means triphosphate, three phosphates. As your ATP is used to help muscles contract, you then lose a phosphate. Now you become ADP. So two phosphates, you replace that with phosphocreatine. It's readily stored energy within the muscles so you can enhance power output, specifically within that alactic energy system, also known as the PCR energy system, phosphocreatine energy system. So think of a very quick example, 100 meter sprint, known as mainly alactic, even though it has other aerobic components, etc. But don't worry about that. 
that's how creatine works for you and is very good for those looking for strength and power improvements. We then have taurine, three grams. Now taurine is an interesting supplement. It seems to work synergistically with caffeine. Typically the higher the dose of taurine, the less caffeine you need to see the same performance benefits. So this has three grams of taurine, which means you wouldn't need as much caffeine, even though this is a very high stimulant pre-workout, it has 300 milligrams, but we'll get to that. Then we have beta alanine, 2.5 grams. Again, this is around about the acute dose you would need to see some performance benefits after using it. However, beta alanine is very similar to creatine. And that is you want to take it chronically to see performance benefits. You're looking at around 179 grams total of beta alanine over two to 10 weeks. And then you're gonna see around a 2% improvement in short endurance performance. So think about like a 400 meter run. So there's no problem with having beta alanine in the pre-workout. It's more so the problem that you're gonna to need to take beta alanine on other days when you're not taking this pre-workout. And you're probably gonna to need to take more. Typically you wanna take even up to six grams per day so you can get the accumulation of beta alanine in your system. Now you don't wanna take six grams at once because you'll be itching and tingling your balls off most of the day. So you typically want to just space that out morning, lunch, dinner, maybe two grams at a time, then that way you can get the benefits without so much tingling. So you will feel tingling obviously with this because there's a side effect of beta alanine. However, it is not harmful. It's just something that happens and you don't need to worry too much about it. Now beta alanine works by increasing carnosine levels. It buffers the hydrogen ions or the waste products to do with metabolism, especially high intensity after, or in high intensity exercise reduces the pH of the muscle environment and therefore you can increase the time to fatigue when you're doing more endurance based performance. We then have betaine anhydrous 2.5 grams. It's actually a relatively new ingredient in a lot of pre-workout supplements. There's not too much research around what it does and backing it, but it seems to potentially promote a more anabolic environment for you to build muscle. So it down regulates the endurance molecular pathway. So we have the mTOR pathway, which is stimulating muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth. Then we have the AMPK pathway, which is known as the endurance pathway, promoting endurance adaptations. The problem is the AMPK pathway down regulates or basically switches off the muscle building pathway. So betaine anhydrous may help by down regulating that endurance pathway to keep the muscle building pathway going. So that's something there. Again, the thing is, even though some of these ingredients may not have a lot of science backing them, some of them do, but a lot of them don't, especially within a lot of pre-workouts. If there's no harm, then whatever, I don't mind it being in there. And if there's a potential benefit, sure, why not take that risk and, and potentially see performance enhancements without the risk of the downsides. We then have L-tyrosine, two grams. I've talked about L-tyrosine, I think every other pre-workout review because it's in pretty much every pre-workout now. However, it can never be dosed to levels that it needs to be dosed. You're looking at you know, 10, 20 plus grams to see the benefits seen in a lot of the research, which is impossible within a pre-workout supplement because then you're just selling L-tyrosine. So L-tyrosine, we just leave that as uh, as is, it's supposed to be a cognitive enhancer. I don't think you're gonna get much out of two grams anyway. We then have red spinach leaf extract. And this is another new one that we see within a lot of supplements now. It's a dose of one gram. And just so I can pull up some of the research here in front of me. So taking one gram for seven days and one hour before a four kilometer cycling time trial improved time to complete uh, the time trial and power output and average speed compared to the placebo. So basically taking a gram for seven days before this time trial you see improvements in power output, improvements in the speed to complete your endurance tasks. So this is a supplement that's definitely worth trying. There's no harm in using something like that. And it's in the pre-workout for you. We then have red beet extract. So it's another nitric oxide booster. There's some research uh, showing that beetroot can do that. Obviously there's a big push for other beetroot supplements within the market as a nitric oxide or blood flow booster. So that is in there too at one gram. We then have alpha GPC, 300 milligrams. Again, another nootropic or cognitive enhancer. That's all good. We then move on to the caffeine blend. So we have 300 milligrams total caffeine, 250 milligrams uh, caffeine anhydrous, and a delayed release caffeine of 50 milligrams. Honestly, I don't think that really matters if you have delayed release or not 50 milligrams. You're still getting hit with a massive dose of caffeine. If you are caffeine sensitive, I would not recommend this. I think a lot of energy drinks now are starting to come up with 300 milligram versions. The, the amount these companies are pushing stimulants is just insane. You've got, even got some pre-workouts going 400 plus milligrams of caffeine, which is crazy. Um, I don't think you need to go that high. Obviously, if we look at the research, we see three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight to see strength and power improvements. So for example, a lot of powerlifters will use that dose before uh, competition. 
So you're looking at 300 plus milligrams of caffeine. However, there's a lot of research showing that you can get similar performance benefits with much lower doses, one to two milligrams um, per kilogram of body weight or lower. So I don't think you need to have these high dose pre-workouts, even if you have a lot of, for example, coffee in the day, you can still see performance benefits, even if you are caffeine habituated. So just bear that in mind. If you like the high stims, this is perfect. You've got 300 milligrams in there. Again, you can go with the premium formula. You get 50 milligrams less caffeine if you want a little less, but you'll get a, also get a little less of everything else. You then have L-theanine at 150 milligrams. So typically we like to see it the other way around in terms of the ratio. You want a two to one ratio of L-theanine to caffeine. So if there was 300 milligrams of caffeine, you'll typically want to see 600 milligrams of L-theanine. It's the other way around. You still get a little bit of that effect where it's synergistic. So you have caffeine, which is considered the upper, making you more alert, uh, more ready to train, etc. And then you have L-theanine, which is kind of like that relaxing supplement that brings you back down. Now, when you take them together, L-theanine tends to take the edge off the caffeine. So if you have too much caffeine or you usually get jittery anxious, L-theanine will take that edge away. And even though the research states two to one ratio, I've used many different ratios and they all seem to work relatively the same. You then have of ATP. So I talked about ATP earlier in terms of creatine. Now this is a form, a direct form of ATP, which is quite interesting, 150 milligrams of it. And just to pull the research up in front of you here. So 150 milligrams, which is the same dose in this pre-workout, taken daily for 12 weeks, increased muscle thickness compared to a placebo. Um, a single 1.5 gram dose had subjects take more steps during a resisted step test. They travel further and they burned more calories than the placebo. So there's some interesting research around L of ATPs. The fact that it's in there, perfect. Potentially can help you build muscle. There's no downsides to taking it, so why not? And then finally, we have Rodalia Rosea, 100 milligrams. This is slightly below the efficacious dose and it seems to be the only one that's like that. But essentially we're looking at reducing fatigue and having a nootropic effect with that supplement or with that ingredient. And then you've got some uh, ginseng and some black pepper extract, 25 milligrams, five milligrams. You've got some other smaller stuff at the end that doesn't really matter too much. But that runs through the entire ingredients list there. And you have a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of it dosed properly. Again, as I mentioned, you have the premium formula, which has a little less of a few different things. You still get benefit out of this. And remember the main thing in a pre-workout is the caffeine. The caffeine is the thing that is going to give you the performance benefits. Everything else is kind of like that cherry on top. So between the two, again, I would just go for the maximum because it has everything dosed properly. If you are very caffeine sensitive, you want something with slightly less caffeine. I mean, 250 milligrams to 300, it's not that big of a jump. If it was 300 versus 100, yeah, that will make a huge difference. But 250 to 300, that's not gonna make too much difference. Might as well go for the better dosed pre-workout. So now I'm gonna go through the mixability test. Now, the serving size of the premium version is 19.3 grams or 20 grams. The serving size for the maximum is 30 grams. So you're getting 10 grams more powder on this one. So typically you might need more water for this one, depending on how you like the flavor and how you like the mix. So let's just do a scoop of this. This is the maximum. This is the berry flavor. We'll just give that a quick mix so it doesn't sit in there. And then we'll do, we have the tropical flavor of the premium. Again, slightly smaller scoop. So let me just show you the differences in the scoop quickly. Oh, I'm inhaling all that powder here. Whew. As you can see here, different sizes. I don't know if I'm doing a good job illustrating that, but you can see different size scoopers in both to show how much powder is going in there. So let's check the mixability of these. These actually mix really well. So you can see here, there's a lot in there that's still, I mean, I mixed it a little bit ago, but if you were drinking it, a little bit of sediment at the bottom. For this one, you're gonna need more water just because there's 30 damn grams of powder in this. So a lot of different ingredients, different weights in there. So just make sure you mix it and shake it regularly when you drink it. This is the premium firmament. It mixes a little better just because there's less powder, to be honest. So pretty much the same as most other pre-workouts. I can't fault it there. You can use it in a shaker, whatever. Now the taste test, this is what's interesting about this pre-workout. You would think, okay, 30 gram scoop, 20 gram scoop, the thing is gonna be damn sweet. However, it's a very mild flavor and it's actually quite nice. I say this is the berry one. So it's more of a 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than it's not sweet. So typically you get a very tart, sweet taste with a pre-workout, like a blue raspberry kind of flavor. This is not that. This is a little more subtle. It literally just tastes like a berry without too much of the sweetness. So it's quite nice if you don't like uh, something that's too sweet. This is very good. Tropical one. It's a little more tart and a little more sweet, but it's still not sweet like some of the other pre-workouts I've had before. So these are these are perfect in terms of taste. I mean, all pre-workouts taste good nowadays. They flavor them like this. So regardless, if you just don't like something that's too sweet, these are really good. So let's talk about the final criteria and that is price. And with the amount of ingredients and how well it's dosed in here, I expected something stupid expensive, but it's only $50 for this entire tub and you're getting 20 servings, 30 grams a pop. So this is basically a month supply if you're training uh, five times a week, for example, a month supply for $50 and you get every ingredient you need in there dosed properly. The premium version is $40, $10 cheaper. You get most of the same stuff in there again, but you get 30 servings in this container. So this is gonna last you much longer if you're training the same uh, five times a week. Again, you got an extra two weeks in there. So six weeks or a month and a half supply in this one. So if you're on a little bit of a budget, you can go with this. You get a lot of the same benefits as the maximum version, a little less caffeine and it'll last you much longer. If you're looking to just go nuts, this $50 every month and you're good to go. Now, if you go down in the description as well, there'll be a discount code there for you. I think it'll give you five or 10% off. You have to double, have to double check that. But regardless, it is there for you if you like this. Again, this is the approval card with <laughs> the most amount of ingredients I've ever seen and dosed properly. So I'm quite surprised and I'm quite surprised at the price too. So give this a go. Please make sure you like, subscribe. If you like this review, please make sure to comment down below. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to review. Have you tried shifted pre-workout before? Also let me know what you think and stay tuned for the next video.